Tension is increasing in Chad after the death of its president. Anger against the Inter-Military Council is growing and there are more protests and threats from armed rebel groups. So is stability at risk in this north-central African state? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hashem Ahalbarra. Tensions have been high in Chad since the sudden death of President Idris Deby nearly two weeks ago. He ruled the impoverished desert country for three decades, but was killed while visiting troops fighting rebels. Deby's son was immediately announced as his successor and a military council set up. That moves rejected by the opposition that condemns the army's takeover as a coup. And it's since led to more division. At least eight people were killed between protesters and security forces earlier this week. Civil society groups in Chad are calling for more protests to demand a return to civilian rule. Some demonstrators say they want to choose their leader freely, while others accuse France of backing the military council against the will of the people. Ahmed Idris has the latest from the capital, Jamena. Since the death of President Idris Deby, there have been attacks by both Boko Haram and rebels in the north of the country. There have also been demonstrations here in the capital and elsewhere in Chad that was violently put down by the security forces, resulting in at least a death. France, which earlier supported the military uh, takeover for the purpose of continuity, was quick to condemn the repression or the violent crackdown by the security forces. Now, since General Mohammed took over from his father, he's left the cabinet he inherited largely intact. The parliament, which was suspended along with the constitution, is also back in session. Whether or not these moves are enough to placate activists and the opposition, as well as international partners of Chad, uh, for, to allow the transition process to continue, remains to be seen. The next few months will be critical. Now, uh, there are real concerns that Chad, which has contributed or is contributing thousands of troops to regional peacekeeping operations or fight against armed groups in the Sahel and the Lake Chad region, may be forced to withdraw some of these troops to bring them home if the security situation continues to deteriorate to bolster security at home. France really wants to see uh, this government in place uh, to allow for continuity and to further secure these areas. It feels that if Chad resume or removes some of its troops in these areas, then a lot of countries in the region, most of them are Francophone countries, will be exposed to violent attacks by these armed groups. We'll speak to our panel shortly, but first, let's take a closer look at how unrest in Chad could affect the region. The country lies in a strategic position across the Sahel and beside the Horn of Africa. Militarily, it's probably the strongest of the G5 Sahel joint force countries. To the east is Sudan, where there's long-term instability, particularly in Darfur. That's a conflict Debbie was accused of stoking through support for some armed tribesmen. There's also instability in the south, in the Central African Republic, one source of nearly half a million refugees who are living in Chad. To the west, there is Niger and Nigeria, countries facing armed groups like Boko Haram. And to the north of Chad, there's been a decade of instability in Libya. The rebel group Front for Change and Concord in Chad operates across the border. This is the front line where Idris Deby was fatally wounded. For more on this, I'm joined by our guests in Abuja. Obigwe Igwego, Geopolitical and Security Analyst for Afri Politica in Africa Security Think Tank. In Rabat, Nofal Aboud, Executive Director of the Nordic Center for Conflict Transformation. In London, Nathaniel Powell, Associate Researcher at Lancaster University and author of France's Wars in Chad, Military Intervention and Decolonization in Africa. Warm welcome to you all. Obigwe, the, this is a critical moment for Chad, and this is a moment where people were looking forward to see some sense of wisdom prevailing, particularly when it comes from the uh, ruling uh, council now, the military uh, council. What happened was totally the opposite, and a clamp down on the protesters. Could this be an indication that they are not willing to, to, to make any compromise in the future? 
Yeah, first of all, I think we have to recognize that it's the, a continuation of the Derby strategy. When I mean by Derby strategy, the legacy of, of the father. That's exactly how the father has dealt with in, uh, uprisings against his rule and the continuation now the son, uh, Muhammad Derby, is, is, uh, is already showing the same signs because the, the, he, has, he has already appointed himself with support of the military as a guarantor of the transitional process. So I think for, for him, he sees these this, uh, opposition uh, fi uh, figures and their, pro and their supporters questioning what the timetable that he, ha he has set. So whether or not he would keep to the timetable or be more uh, malleable to, to, to change changes or be more uh, strong-handed uh, strong would depend on that international pressure. That would be mm -hmm. very, very key in shaping this new uh, military council. Nofal, do you think that they will care about any international uh, pressure in the near future when mu much of the uh, statements uh, that we've seen so far from the French, from the African Union, have not really been that strong when it comes to the interim uh, council? Exactly. Uh, well, Chad is known as being a country with a history of many, many coups and uh, uprisings of the populations. Uh, and uh, when we see, for example, the way France and uh, President Macron came during the funeral, uh, basically warming up the place for uh, the son uh, the, the, of Idris Debi, Mahatma Debi, uh, it shows actually there is something behind it. And, and the idea behind it is to support the status quo that exists in, in the country from a security perspective. However, this comes against the people's will, uh, looking for more democratic and uh, changes in terms of human rights. We know that uh, Idris Debi himself came uh, to replace a former dictator, which is Hissen uh, uh, Harbre. Uh, with the hope that uh, uh, a change towards democratic uh, uh, situation will, will occur. What we have seen, we have seen women and men in the streets uh, protesting against the way the transition has been made with the announcement uh, of uh, the military uh, council that the power will shift to the son, to David Jr., uh, while people uh, during the elections which went on a mm -hmm. peaceful way they were hoping for some kind of change which they don't see at all okay nathaniel so i don't think that the, the african unions uh, uh, was strong i don't think france was strong uh, unfortunately they're supporting that uh, supporting something that completely goes against the constitution of chad okay which normally who should be in power is the president of the legislative assembly nathaniel how do you see this particular characterization coming from many uh, Western countries, the African Union itself, uh, following the death of Idris Dhabi. It's, this is someone who has been pivotal in the fight against armed groups. There's a sense that a continuation is good for Chad, good for the region. Nobody seems to care about the people who have been oppressed for decades. Uh, that's a uh, fair, fair general, a fair assessment. So the view from Paris and to a lesser extent for the United States, but also I should say from regional capitals as well, so in, in Mali, in Niamey, uh, in Niger, but also in Nigeria, is that uh, whatever whatever negative aspects the transition may have on the lives of everyday Chadians and on the democratic prospects for the future of Chad, what is most important for outside interveners, and particularly France, uh, is the kind of stability that Chad and its military are uh, supposed to provide uh, for the region in the form of Chadian troops that fight alongside the French and uh, G5 Sahel forces in Mali and Niger and Burkina Faso against jihadist groups, and also their contribution to Nigeria's fight against Boko Haram uh, in Cameroon, uh, Cameroon's fight against Boko Haram in the Lake Chad region. So uh, from the perspective of outside interveners, they're far less concerned about the prospects for democracy in Chad than they are for the contributions of Debbie's regime and its successor to uh, regional, uh, regional security policy. Avigway, now against the backdrop of the uncertainty and the deadlock in Chad, the opposition and civil society leaders have stepped in and the other ones who are the front of the fight against the interim military council. What can they achieve realistically? From a practical standpoint, the more they keep on the pressure from within Chad, the more likely 
the military council will stick to the 18 months transitional period. Because once, once uh, uh, Muhammad David senses the lack of momentum, the, if he has any inspiration or any uh, hidden agenda to extend the, the, the uh, transitional period, he will. Because it all depends on that internal pressure. Because when the people accept and feel, OK, this is business as usual, let's just go about our normal life, then there will be no international pressure. Because it is the international pressure that creates the heavy, that leads the, the uh, crazy situation for an he a heavy handed response from the military council. And that heavy handed response co causes more international pressure. So we have to understand how, how it's very important that people in charge, civil society, the opposition uh, leaders continue to protest and call for you know, the return to democra democracy and real democracy mm -hmm. this time, not the one under uh, Idris Deby. Because with the, more, the more they do that, the more people in international community would know that everything is not okay in Chad. And then if the government, if the military government dares respond in this heavy-handed manner, that create that they lose political capital, they lose diplomatic okay. cover, or at least it raises diplomatic costs on, on the, the military junta to continue beyond the, this allocated 18 months. No, Fal, there's a sense of uh, deja vu here because the military council says it's going to stay for 18 months, 12 to 18 months, and then it's going to step aside. But Dries Debbie himself, when he came to power in 1990, he said exactly the same thing. And he said he's not going to run for any other term just for him to stay in power for 30 years. Exactly. That's a deja vu. And uh, what we have seen when people got, went out on the streets, they, they, they know that. They felt that this is another risk, that they're probably going to go over another 30 years, the same way they went through before with the, uh, Idris Deby. It's going to be the same thing. That is why they're taking a risk. And they're taking a risk to go out in the street to... Uh, to protest against the military and the rules, knowing that uh, in before, in 2008, it was a similar thing. People went out to the street and there was a, a massive crackdown against the populations in Chad. This is a deja vu. And uh, the main thing that the, peop, you know, the military has to understand and uh, the international community supporting uh, the status quo in, in, in Chad, they have to understand the stability is supported from the base, not from the top. And this is becoming even more concerning, knowing the new modus operandi of uh, terrorist groups and how they function, especially in Africa. They use what I call the marriage of convenience, mm -hmm. and they uh, infiltrate within within rebels and insurgents inside each country, and uh, and and uh, you know they support support uh, their uh, their mm -hmm. claims and they, they use terrorist. Uh, attack. Okay. What, what is happening also, what is very important to know, that there are Chadians that are coming down from south of Libya and now coming inside the country. So it's very concerning. Okay. Nathaniel, this seems to be a standard African dilemma in a way or another. Vibrant opposition people who are desperate for genuine change. However, they are outmaneuvered, outnumbered by a political elite which has cash, weapons, affiliations, and the backing of the international community. Ultimately, they are the ones who will prevail. Uh, that's, that's a potential fear, it's a potential outcome. Uh, and again, I don't think it's uh, simply an African phenomenon. I think this is something that occurs throughout the planet uh, where you have uh, major global powers, and global sense is often the United States, but in much of Africa, often it's France, that supports a political status quo on the assumption that this will benefit regional stability, which is a much higher political priority for international interveners than uh, domestic uh, kind of democratic governance. And what is often the case, and historically has been the case, mm -hmm. is that authoritarian forms of governance supported by the outside end up generating the kinds of instability that this kind of support was meant to stop in the first place. So I think you're seeing this potential in Chad right now. France mm -hmm. backed Debbie for 30 years, and they don't have a plan B in case things go south. And that is very potentially what could happen. Obigwe, this is the biggest problem with the opposition in Chad. They have never been able to get their act together, choose a name that could rally all the people behind him. Could they replicate the same disaster this time when they have the sympathy of the international community? However, so far, there is no alternative to Mohammed Dizdebi. See, and just, just to even add to the point the, the former speaker was just making, 
the thing with with the proposition and the dynamics in, in Chad right now, we have to understand. Yes, we're always saying uh, all the, the French uh, explanation is stability. It's not just stability. This is part of a broader geopolitical game France has, is playing in the Sahel, vis a vis Libya, and all, all of West Africa. We're lo we looking at France's continuation of its colonial influence and th that prestige. That's why it continues to pursue you know, a, a very firm grip over the leadership of all of these African countries. We're seeing protests in, in Mali asking for less French influence over their lives. The same thing we've, we've seen all across, and even, even in, 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 uh, in Chad, if you hear some of the protesters that were interviewed, they were also mentioned calling out the, the, the name of France. So France Africa is something that goes beyond stability. We're looking at real political and geoeconomic mm -hmm. control. And even the situation in Libya is not is not excluded from the what is happening in, in Chad today. It would be very naive for anyone to think that France's insistence on continuity is only about stability. No, oh. it's not. It's a it's a, it's an extension of, of it the way it wants to run and see the West Africa. But going back to your question mm -hmm. on the opposition. The opposition faces real diplomatic uh, challenges and difficulties because you have the African Union ch uh, Commission's chairman, uh, uh, Moussa Faki, is from Chad. Yeah, and he was a former prime minister under Idris Deby. You, the slow response from the African Union in condemning the, 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 uh, the military takeover, you, you, it, ha it, it has bearing to that relationship because... The African Union has been very, very cautious because of mm -hmm. that, the, that leadership, you know, that ties. And then you have regional countries, you know, up, you know in, we're looking at Nigeria, Cameroon, Niger. They are all cautious as well. So the, the, the problem with the opposition in Chad is that they lack international support. Okay. That is a fact. Nigeria would not stand up to Mahatma Debis' uh, son's uh, military junta because it knows that it risks losing support for, for troops. Mali would not because MINUSMA has a lot I of see your point. from Chad. Niger, the same thing. So that, mm -hmm. that's a problem the opposition faces. What is no interesting... International diplomatic... What is interesting this time, Naufal, is we have two very young leaders with the potential to shape the future of Chad. Mohammed Idris Debi, who is now the leader of the military junta. And at the same time, you have uh, Sukse Masra, who is a young, vibrant opposition figure who can electrify the people and whose message seems to resonate among many, many Chadians. Who do you think will be the key player in deciding who should take over, internal or f foreign diplomacy? Of course, in terms of foreign diplomacy, they want the status quo to continue, which uh, favors the uh, Mohammed Idris Debi. But in terms of real stability and the real support that the Chadians will have, they would look for uh, the head of uh, the rebels and the protesters uh, you know, to back them up because he brings hope. He brings hope of change in terms, not only on the political aspect or geopolitical aspect, but especially in terms of the socioeconomic situation of people. We don't have to forget that uh, in Chad, you know, the oil was discovered in the south and in a very small uh, and flowing through Cameroon. And it's very small portion of Uyghurshi and Eli that benefits from that. Uh, in the eyes of the young people and the new generation in, in Chad, they need the, what resonates with them is not stability like uh, uh, the other panelists uh, are mentioning, but also mm -hmm. in terms of change, uh, okay. genuine change. What he, this is gives us uh, an opportunity, in fact, in Chad, to have an African-African uh, solution to the okay. problem, hopefully. Nathaniel, at the same time, there is another key player whose life has always been shrouded in secrecy and mystery. Mohammed Mahdi Ali, the leader of the rebel group FACT. We know that he's been in exile since the 16th. 60s, he joined the socialist movement in France then, and he merged now in the desolate desert of northern Chad to become the man who potentially could take over in Jamena. Do you see him someone who could rally the Chadians behind him? 
Um, so it's it's unclear what kind of popular support base he actually has. So his movement, the fact, has uh, some constituency in northern Chad among among some of the Tubu people in northern Chad. But the extent to which it's popular and, and strongly supported is an open question. Uh, the movement's initial goal, which was to overthrow Debbie, uh, was certainly probably supported in its you know in its generality by by many many Chadians, but. The movement's communiques have always been kind of vague in terms of what they actually uh, were looking to achieve. So it's unclear the, whether he would have actually been any different uh, or would be any different mm -hmm. than, than Debbie in terms of the way he's ruled Chad. Chad has a long history of rebels that take power uh, using language of democratization and mm -hmm. revolution and end up kind of governing the way the predecessors have. And this is exactly what is sad about Africa in particular. Chad, same case, uh, Obigwe, which is the case we're talking about. Muhammad Ali, who comes from the Garan tribe, uh, who is now seen as the enemy number one of Muhammad Idris Dabi, who comes from the Zaghawa. And we seem to be neglecting other minorities like the Sara, who are, in a way or another, a key components of the Chadian community, but who have, who have been for more than four decades sidelined by the mainstream political establishment. Yes, that, that's, that's, the, that's the problem we see in, in these societies with a lot of diversity in terms, in terms of ethnicity. But the beauty of democracy is true democrats and democrats in spirit and in practice will always have a messaging that everybody would, can identify with that is beyond ethnic or, re, or religious divides. And go, just to add to the point of the previous speaker, the, 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 when rebels, when you bank on rebels, rebellion usually will always start because of certain grievances, and then those grievances are always built around certain identities mm -hmm. that exclude others. Now, in this situation, Muhammad Ali, the, the, when you look at a, a, a young, vibrant leader that, that is not looking for a, a power to further his own ethnic uh, machine, uh, uh, agenda, then you have someone that can really re lead Chad into a more democratic and a more f progressive okay. country. Because many of the so-called so security issues that uh, Idris Debi is praised for handling was were caused by the lack of governance and you know development in the country in the first place. Okay. So when we talk about getting po real political development, we have to look at real pe people who favor democracy All right. both in practice. It, and not just in words. No, for very briefly, if you don't mind, where does this leave France, the country which has put all its political weight behind Dris Debi and now his son, uh, Mohamed Debi? Yeah, I mean, uh, what, what's happening in Chad, you know, there, there is a need to be work at the base of the societies. Uh, the way we are looking at it now from a France perspective is to try to address a crisis. Uh, addressing a crisis in itself is not sustainable for for bringing peace okay. uh, and the long term in, in the country. Thank Nathaniel, you. shouldn't the French be concerned at this particular moment because they might just be seen as perpetuating the agony of the Africans? Uh, yeah, that's clearly a risk. Uh, they continue to kind of serve as an obstacle to kind of broader political or, or liberalization or, or the civilianization of rural and Chad. Uh, but I think the French have to, the French from their perspective are weighing the risks of the kind of resentment that that generates uh, with their broader security aims, which uh, in which democratization is certainly low down in the list of priorities. Apparently, this is one of the unfortunate things about politics, which is we have to wait for what the others have to say and decide when a nation is desperate to turn a chapter and start a one that could herald in a moment of prosperity and stability of Iguego, no Fal Abud, Nathaniel Paul. Thank you for your insight. Thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website aljazeera.com for further discussion. Go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashem Ahlbara and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now.